Hello everybody and welcome back. So this video is essentially part two of two videos that I have done about Highland titles and purchasing the title of Lord, Lady or Laird in Scotland and whether or not it's a scam. And the first video that I did of this, um, you'll find the link for actually in the description of this video. But the first video really dealt with the whole question, the legality of, of buying a title, Lord, Laird, Lady, um, and the legality of, you know, own, owning a souvenir plot, etc. Um, so I went through that pretty thoroughly. It was about a 15 minute or so uh, video and you can check that out in the link. But in this one, I wanted to actually do part two of uh, addressing some comments. That first video, while it, you know, it caused a lot of discussion amongst people about the legality of the title and uh, the ownership of land in Scotland through the Highland Titles uh, schema, uh, a bunch of people actually also did a bunch, uh, left a bunch of comments saying that the whole thing was a scam because they're not actually doing any conservation efforts that um, it's a bit of a uh, it's it's a bit of a bait and switch that uh, they're not really working on anything that there's there's uh, schemes already in place to uh, reclaim the land in Scotland for native species etc and um, I found it really interesting that people left those comments and one of the things that my wife and I were long planning to do was actually visit Highland Titles um, and I had heard and seen that um, uh, Highland Titles is doing genuine work, but we wanted to go see our, our plots of land and we wanted to go and see what the work they were doing in Highland Titles. Uh, and so I'm going to cover in this video uh, actually addressing the question of whether or not Highland Titles is a scam in terms of its conservation efforts, in terms of the work that it's actually doing and putting the money to use in uh, conserving the land in Scotland and rehabilitating species, etc. So, um, Initially, when we when we looked at at Highland titles, uh, the focus was on planting native species of trees, and uh, that seemed to be the the lion's share of what this was doing. So, uh, some of the original videos, if I'm remembering correctly, from the um, promotional materials from Highland Titles itself talked about how uh, native species of trees and plants in in and around Highland Titles had been deforested um, for sheep farming but also uh, what we learned actually when when my wife and I went to Highland Titles was in fact um, that's only part of the story in some of the pictures that you'll see of people looking at their plots of land, you'll actually see these giant trees on the reserve. And they're like, well, that can't possibly have been Highland Titles. They've only been around for about 15 years. And those trees have clearly been there for a lot longer. So it's what a lot of people were arguing um, means that Highland Titles is a scam. It's not actually doing the work that it's saying. But, um, and I, and I was curious about looking at these, these pictures myself saying, my God, that's a fully grown forest. What are you talking about that you're repopulating native, native species? Well, this is what we learned. So as far as the trees are concerned, those trees were actually put there quite a long time ago for commercial interests. And believe it or not, I'm coming to you from Canada right now. You can see the fall colors in the background. They're actually North American species of trees so the native species in some cases were plowed down and North American species were put in its place for commercial logging interests. And so those trees that you're seeing on the plots and you will see in the video and the photos that we're doing in this video um, are not native trees. They were trees that were put there for commercial use, but that commercial forestation had a devastating impact on the landscape in terms of devastating other forms of plant life that are native to the species in terms of really harming uh, animal and bird life because they they lost their homes and, and because the, the canopy of these commercial trees are so thick sunlight doesn't get down into the into the floor of the forest and so it has an impact impact on birds it has an impact on animals it has an impact on insects which is sort of the second part of Highland Titles. So before we get too far, I'm gonna show you some pictures and videos talking and looking at the, the forestation aspect of Highland Titles. And what happens is 
is when Highland Titles purchases these lands with these uh, non-native trees, what they do is they actually call in somebody to clear the, the commercial logging or the commercial trees out. They begin a process of refertilizing the soil using pigs and, and, uh, and I think maybe other animals, but we saw pigs when we were there. And then they begin to plant the native species. And the effect is profound in what they've already done in the last decade or so. So let's check that out. This is all yours here. Eh? This is all ours yeah. here. Yeah. So ours goes right up. Is there there's enough room for the new trees to go in there just fine? Yeah, so new trees will obviously be a lot smaller and mm. what well, we should plant. Mm. loads of wildlife to the area here. So mm. we get fish eating species, like there's herons, we've had osprey visiting, mm. um, we have two families of otters living on the reserve. Oh wow, okay. Then with the water, just So as I hinted at, um, Highland Titles may have started with the tree replanting, um, but it moved into other areas. So uh, two areas in particular um, that we um, that were aware of, and we, we talked with Stuart and uh, Heather about, um, who sort of do the tours and sort of manage the, the biological end of things, um, are the hedgehog repopulation and the wild Scottish wild cat. So Scott, both of those species, at least where Highland Titles is, um, were endangered, if not extinct. I know the wild cat population, I think Heather said it went down to some like incredibly low number. And in fact, there's been so much interbreeding with the traditional wild cat, with traditional house cats, that it's believed there are actually no purebred Scottish wild cats left. Um, the cats that they, they work to rehabilitate at the site are actually, at least in part, um, domestic house cat. Um, um, there's no purebred Scottish wild cats left, but they are, there are a bunch of these animals that do have 
genes from the Scottish wildcat are at least, you know, a quarter or half Scottish wildcat in terms of their parentage, and they do rehabilitation efforts. We didn't get to see the cats. We did see sort of some of the enclosures where they, they work with the cats or they, they have the cats come. But we did see the hedgehog. So the hedgehog piece um, with the deforestation and etc. and the uprooting of the land, the hedgehog species in and around Highland Titles was severely devastated. And so we did actually get to see some of the rehabilitation efforts in terms of the hedgehogs. So we're going to show you a little bit of video and footage of that as well. So 241 grams when we got her and 466 now, so doing yeah. well, I think we could say. Two days ago, so she's probably even heavier now. Yeah. Are you coming out, friend? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe the light is fine. Lastly, I want to talk about the insect population. So because, um, um, you know, because some of the native species of, of the native species of tree was moved out and, and as a repercussion of the commercial planting of the, of the forest, there was, um, you know, loss of, you know, native plants on the floor, on the ground level of the forest. Um, it had a profound impact on the insect life that actually was there. And so on a couple of, uh, on a couple of fronts, Highland Titles is actually working to conserve insect life. So one is native bees. And they uh, have constructed these beehives where they, Highland Titles does not take the honey. They leave it all there. The bees come and go and they get primary school uh, kids to actually paint the boxes that they put for bees. And we saw a number of these boxes there. Um, so where they have begun the process of planting native species back onto the land and natural flowers and that, they have the beehives who uh, pollinate, etc., and help to you know, get that native landscape back in order. The other thing we saw was from a fairly recently clear cut um, where they cleared out some of the commercial logging and had begun the fertilization process for, for planting um, native species back on a, on a section of the land. Um, they've actually created a bug hotel. And so they've created these this log enclosure where these bugs, traditional bugs, can come and they have shelter and they start to breed and they can expand and they help with um, establishing that native insect species at Highland Titles as well. So I'm going to show you some pictures and videos of what that looks like and then we're going to wrap up the video. Look at, so we send them off to local primary schools and that's who paints them. <laughs> And in the summer months, we bring the kids down, put them in little bee suits, and they get to see the hives. And the hives are actually there. So you can see we've added like bamboo and bricks yeah. and uh, pipes and things, different textures for different insects. We've So, from a conservation perspective, in terms of spending money on Highland Titles, Highland Titles, in terms of its conservation efforts, um, I, I was amazed by the number of people who inundated me with comments saying it was all fake, they're not really doing any conservation efforts. That is absolutely false. Um, I was on the ground with my wife. We were both there and we witnessed it in action. And as a matter of fact, we participated in the process by planting a tree of our own while we were there. Um, and we saw all these things going on. So anybody that says that it's a, it's a scam, they're not actually doing any environmental conservation effort, those people have clearly never been to Highland Titles, they don't know anything about the area, they don't know about anything about the work that's being done. Uh, one of the comparisons that was made with this whole uh, purchase a Lord Laird lady title and your one square foot plot of land or 10 square foot or 100 square foot plot of land in Scotland, the joke was, oh, it's like a name a star campaign. It is absolutely not a name a star campaign. This is a legit effort in um, conservation and bringing back native species of plants, insects and animals, uh, including birds. Uh, into the area where they had been, you know, wiped out essentially by commercial efforts over, you know, decades and if not centuries. And the efforts of Highland Titles are real. 
Um, it's a it's a true. So it's not like you're in you know. Uh, simply just reserving a name of a star in some registry somewhere. You're at the money that's going to Highland Titles is actually going for the projects that it says that it's going for. So I recommend it. Uh, we had a fantastic time. We got to meet Heather and Stuart and, and Fiona. Had great conversation. Spent a couple of hours on the reserve. Got to see what was going on. Got to see the you know the animals. Got to see um, you know the insects. Um, hotel all of that stuff and we planted the tree we saw the hedgehog the whole thing it's a real thing and so i strongly encourage people to actually get involved with this because it's uh it's a it's a worthwhile effort to restore the scottish uh, landscape to its natural heritage all right thanks everybody oh i love tree there we go see and then you just put the soil around it and on top. <laughs> it's our love tree. How's that? Is that good enough? That's perfect. <laughs> Make sure it's really in there. <laughs> Someone's always a perfectionist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you go.